This is Twit. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. ACI Learning provides world-class service from beginning to end of your training journey and beyond. Fortify your expertise with access to self-paced IT training videos, interactive practice labs, and certification practice tests. Individuals use the code TWIT30 for 30% off a standard or premium individual IT pro membership at go.acilearning.com slash twit. We're talking a little bit about what what StudioBot can do for developers and that it's an AI tool. But what exactly is StudioBot? You know, it's the easy thing is to, uh, you know, because it's AI and because it's Google and, you know, it, this generative AI thing is fresh on everybody's minds. We've got ChatGPT over here. We've got Google with its Bard and everything. So some people are probably, um, yeah, maybe maybe outside of the developer community, which I am, I'm firmly part of, but um, somebody, it would be easy to look at it and be like, oh, this is like Bard, but for coding. Um, how would you explain the utility of StudioBot? And um, and is this something that you're in your feedback, in your interaction with developers, that developers were asking for? We want a system that we can plug, you know, put in a problem and get a solution in the in the form of code and hence StudioBot. So I guess explain a little bit about what it is and then a little bit further into that. Yeah, you kind of step back in the daily life of developer. It's 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 actually more than just like typing in Android Studio. It's, it's a mixture of Googling stuff, going to Stack Overflow, finding code samples, like asking all these little questions. Even the most advanced developer, it's like, I don't remember this like one little question. How does one little task, right? Let me just look on search, right? So this sort of like assisted like development is sort of the the, the key use case we're looking at for StudioBot, where it's about hey, how do I kind of uh, accelerate my understanding or, or where would might might take me a couple minutes of searching or kind of connecting things, we can do things in context. So it's different than just, you know, you know, we mentioned Bard. So Bard, you know, um, internally have a number of teams doing a lot of great work on on, on large in those models, but specifically for, for StudioBot, it's about how do we integrate sort of the best of Android Studio development with sort of the power of the large growth models. And so for instance, um, I gave the demo at IO where it's like we can recognize not just as, a, as, a, as it's like text, we can recognize code, we can recognize dependencies and imports. Many times you find a code sub online, it's like, well, how do I get this into my project? Like, how do I find the right dependencies? And it's not going to build, how it's not going to compile. We thought about those things. Or things like, hey, I have a crash or an error log in my project. Well, you know, instead of Googling for that, we can identify the problem and create a quick action for that. So on top of sort of the response, we're adding all these you know, efficiencies to this. And we did a video actually with um, at IO. We didn't do this, we did this on stage. We did it during the IO's technical session. We have these quick actions inside the inside the program. So it's like, hey, you know, debug this line. So you can actually do a quick action on Superbot, debug the line. Hey, why don't you copy and paste this line from the the log cat to my, my my ID? All these actions are sort of additive sort of accelerants to development. So again, long answer your answer to your question. I think it's an assistant to help accelerate development. Uh, built upon this launching of models, which provides a lot of answers that we can add sort of quick actions inside of Android Studio. Yeah, thanks so for like, the comprehensive that's... answer there. Oh, uh, go ahead, just, Matthew. You can see as a reminder, there's like there's it, several different dimensions, though. You know, so often we get like the headline of generate code, generate app, and I just wanted to like put a yellow highlighter on something that Jamal said here for a minute is there's so much of the developer experience that is uh, explain this. Why is this happening? What have I missed? And and those elements being helpful in those is actually, um, I think, a pretty unique take that we've got on this. We, we essentially want to be helpful, as you heard in the in the stage presentation, want to be helpful in all dimensions of software development, not just in the pure generation of code. So we're thinking about a pretty broad lens on this. So based on everything, you know, both of you said about to be about, it sounds incredibly helpful and, you know, it'll definitely be a useful tool in the developer's arsenal. But I wanted to know, what do you have to say to developers or companies that, you know, are developing Android apps, but they may not like that, you know, they're, this is built into Android Studio? Because um, I don't know if you've seen the news, but um, some companies like Apple, Samsung, for example, have barred their their developers from using um, AI tools like ChatGPT because, you know, they're afraid of their secrets being leaked and being um, enveloped into the model. So, like, what do you say to developers who may similarly be skeptical of tools like StudioBot? Uh, good question. So, you know, honestly, we we, we explored co-completion. That's one of those ideas we, we thought about. Um, the one reason is we pivoted towards 
sort of chat interface for Thudubot is because of this, for this reason. We know that, you know, obviously if you're doing like a small project, you know, you're kind of more a little free flowing, but from our serious developers, there's a lot of concerns for enterprise security in our code. And so really, um, you know, we don't send your source code to Google, right? It's really the chat dialogue between the studio bot, which you type in and which you get back. Uh, and we kind of detail this in our, in our documentation, but this, this is kind of this wall of source separation where it's, um, you know, you have control of what you share. So I think a lot of the code suggestion things do require source code access, which which can be scary for a lot of companies and sort of appreciate that. Um, so that's that's kind of our philosophy. And then, you know, we're, we're just at the beginning of, of this work. So we're we're keeping that in mind because we definitely want this for all developers of experience and not just for like your side projects. You know, we want it for professional developers and that is definitely a key concern for a lot of those developers, but how do we actually add it in in a, in a comfortable way for your own security for your source code?